just thoughts on the game today and then the series in general? Yeah, I think the series in general was all inclusive because what set us up for today was a little bit of the, the weekend. And what I mean by that is Halverson and Lindsey being as good as they were out of the bullpen, gave us some options out of the bullpen, uh, had some fresh arms go out there. But also our guys, you know, knew if they fought, they'd stay in the game and also knew um, you know, if they keep competing, you'd like to think things would, would go their way, but it's not that easy. You can get, you know, dejected when you, you know, have a close one Friday or I'm sorry, game one, and then you expect to come out and, and, and kind of answer back. And, and we certainly did okay, but we, we didn't answer back. So uh, back and forth series. And I think if you were here, you got your money's worth as a fan. To get that answer today, what does that mean for uh, the group and the mentality? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we got our first walk-off win last weekend against A&M, and I'd like to think that's kind of a signature win for the team and maybe will allow them to realize they can do that stuff in the end. And then you have to win your first road game. I mean, we had a pretty tough challenge there, a great environment, whatever you want to call it, against Grand Canyon. Um, and then adverse circumstances up in Columbia, uh, Missouri, and we didn't play well. And then here, um, you know, again, we're in the game, but they don't give me any credit for being close. Um, they were better than us for two days. And I, I think to get the first road win means a lot. Now you know what it takes and what you're capable of doing. Regardless of the outcome, when you're managing a game, of like Thursday night when it was so low scoring and pitching versus today, did you go through the different mindset of what that's like? Yeah, I, I mean, I got to be honest. Um, it it might have been up better to be up five to one than, than ten to one. You got a dangerous lineup that probably all of a sudden relaxes a little bit more. Um, it, it's different being up there, uh, you know, when it's six to four uh, versus a little bit wider margin and defensively too maybe you end up doing something differently than you should um, so yeah every day in general has a different flavor but also the game once it starts it does and I, I'm not so sure you're better off you, you know disregarding the scoreboard for a while so especially on Sunday or game three um, you know in any league it usually gets a little crazy one way or another on day three and today had its own version of crazy and fortunately we were able to win 17 hits today, you fought pretty well against really tough pitches the first two days. Do you feel like the offense is, is finding itself? Do you feel like you're, you're getting comfortable with what you've got there? Yeah, I mean, you know, you see the arms that we're facing and, and look at the at-bats. They're incredibly competitive. Obviously, you'd like more production uh, the previous nights, but I, I would say Herring was the one blip on the radar screen. That we, we knew him and, uh, you know, along with everyone else, recruited the kid. And he was lights out last night. Uh, other than that, I'd like to think our guys were in the box as competitive as they are. Um, again, they execute better the first two days, but um, the guy they ran out there to start the game today isn't that far off from, from some of the other stuff they got going on. What would you think of Skeens? Um, impressive. You know, I, I think I stand for uh, or speak for a lot of people that say um, it's surprising what he's, what he's doing. I mean, everyone knew how good he was, and then he made a jump. Um, but if you really kind of look at things, when you're making the commitment that an Air Force student is making, um, you, you're beat down. I mean, those people sacrifice, not just with all the duties they have, but also in the classroom, uh, how competitive it is. And so when you kind of free up some things and you get some resources dedicated to baseball, it makes sense that he would make the jump that he did. Um, but, but he was good. I think you see Halvey, um, Dolander, and that guy throwing one night and you're a scout or you're covering the game. You got some stuff to write about. It seems like all weekend, almost every guy that took the mound was 95 plus. Um, what's just your reaction to the velo numbers that we're seeing? I, I almost uh, said it to somebody over there. It's kind of like, we might as well just act like this is 91 or 92, like it was, you know, back in the day. Um, but you got some pretty extraordinary athletes on both sides. You saw a bunch of diving catches in the field. Uh, you saw a couple of ridiculous plays. I mean, I don't know how Maui made that one even close um, that, that we reviewed. Um, and then on the mound, it's it, just because they're not swinging a bat doesn't mean they're not an athlete. So you got some explosive athletes that were competing in this series. And really that's what the league's all uh, about. You know, we saw one of our uh, recruits signees here and probably watching out on that field, he realizes he's as talented as the, anybody in his class, but this is the real deal out here. This is pretty serious stuff. So again, good things for you to write about and good things for scouts to watch. And um, you know, the fans too. Fans made it a good series. You think because hitters are seeing it so much at that velocity, they can almost think of it as like 90 You sink or swim. Yeah, I don't think you want to think of it that way if you're a hitter and you ask those guys. Um, but but you either sink or swim, and you got to figure it out. And now, fortunately, with the track man and stuff like that, guys kind of know what's coming. They can train for it in the cage off all these fancy machines and, and things like that. But, again, I just think today's athlete is in an extraordinary spot. I mean, Q 
our strength guy, what he's done with some of our guys' bodies and frames, uh, but, but they're already good athletes, and all these kids have nutritionists and all this stuff. So you're seeing the fruits of all that on the field. When you were playing, what's the most you remember seeing Milo-wise? Yeah, I like that you say that. <laughs> I often say I was a bad player. There was a guy named Kyle Edens from Baylor, and uh, he was a closer, and he would touch 97, maybe a 98, and that was a massive deal, not just in the game, uh, but also in the conference, in the Big 12, that was the Big 12 then. And that was something that stood out extraordinarily. Um, here, uh, amongst these two teams, I think you got eight or nine guys that could do that. Uh, so that puts it into a little perspective. But I'm getting older, the athletes are getting better. And uh, again, I did get a hit off that guy <laughs> and off Mark Burley too, believe it or not. Uh, those are my only two hits. <laughs> well, every team's different. Obviously, last year you had a totally different personality group, skill set, everything. How is this year different and how are you able to to change your coaching style to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, now I'll sound like I'm whining because I've said it a few times, mm -hmm. but this group, like you guys talked to Zane Denton and uh, I'm not sure who else you visited with, but yeah, Dick, I mean, he was a part of last year, but he was injured often and he was able to play a small role uh, amongst a bunch of older guys. It's his first year playing. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he was hiding out. He was crucial for us, um, especially in a regional win that I, I remember. But these guys did not sign up for some of the battles they've had to fight. Right. And I could list about 20 of them for you. Um, Maui's in that category. And uh, th this game is hard enough. This league is challenging enough. And then it's already a challenge to begin with if you just took our team and it was the first year of Tennessee baseball ever. Uh, but it's, it's been unique. And they're navigating through it pretty well. But we've got a lot of progress that we honestly need to make. Right. And, and could you go into where you really focus on? I mean, obviously some defensive things, some base running things. Yeah, no, I think base running and outfield defense was a, was a deal early in the year. And honestly, they've both improved tremendously. And part of it is getting personnel in the right area. If, if you were to ask me, hey, you get to pick one area, mm -hmm. it would be, I don't know that we'd get around a campfire or anything, but it just coming together, you know, be one of the guys. And uh, that's not that easy to do when you haven't been on the field playing next to a guy or you haven't been in a program um, you know, and so I, I think that's an area where these guys got to keep coming together and write their own story. And a big part of it, which if they're listening to this, they shouldn't be, but a big part of it is block out the outside noise. That's so hard to do for any athlete or any kid these yeah. days, but for this team in particular, if they could wall off what's going on and, you know, shake the fans, you know, hands after a series, but during the work week and during games, if they could wall off what everyone's saying, and make our, our group a little closer, that'll be the, the area of progress that I would like to see most. Okay. One more, guys. The, the rotation this weekend, just, what did you think of that? I know you, you want to get to the bullpen, but what, what did you think of the rotation? Yeah, I thought Dolander did not have his best stuff, and by that, really command, because, I mean, the stuff was good. Normally, he's got spot-on command, and it wasn't there, and he battled through it, which we appreciate. But you know with Sewell and Halvey and Lindsey, you kind of got three other SEC weekend starters caliber wise down there. So yeah, we don't mind handing the ball off to the bullpen. And then, you know, Beam did what he needed to do today. I mean, again, when you're up and, and the hitters are relaxed and the dry dirt out here, you got some choppers going through, explosive lineup. I think he did what he needed to do for us uh, on day three. I think Burns is the blip on the radar screen. If you track back to how he's had to bounce around a little bit, it's not an excuse. He certainly didn't make it. Uh, but his stuff wasn't quite what it had been the last two weeks. And I think a big part of that is he's had a really erratic schedule. And so I'm sure he's looking for a breather and then get back on pace. And hey, those six guys are not the only guys, there's others. So hopefully they all have the mindset. Whenever they decide to give me the ball, I'll take it because we could do a lot of things differently if we so choose. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Mark.